Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Tamin Nicholson. I'm the program manager for the Career Training USA program at InterExchange, and I'm joined with, by my colleague, Fatima Rodriguez. Fatima, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself as we kick off the presentation. Hi, everyone. My name is Fatima Rodriguez. I'm the communications and recruitment coordinator here at InterExchange, and I'm really excited to share this webinar with you, and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about how to find an internship and how to apply for the J-1 visa once you do find your internship. So we're really excited to, to kick off this webinar series. It's the first webinar in a series of 10 this spring that we'll be doing about finding internships, about applying for a J-1 visa, interviewing, creating a cover letter, a LinkedIn profile, all of the aspects of pulling together an international internship application. For those of you who are unfamiliar with InterExchange or Career Training USA, we're a nonprofit organization based in New York City and our, our mission is to promote cross-cultural exchange for young professionals and students who are overseas uh, to come to the United States and participate in programs, and then for also students and young professionals who are in the U.S. to go overseas and, and also partake in programs. And the Career Training USA program specifically works with students who have internships and are seeking to come to the United States to do an internship or a traineeship here in the U.S. Obviously, with the pandemic, there has been much less opportunity for people to come and travel and, and experience uh, internships in person or, or to go to another country to, to do their internship. But we know that there's still a lot of interest in these type of programs and there's still a lot of interest in interning in the US. So we thought throughout the spring we would provide the resources that we can during the time that people are thinking about interning while they might not necessarily be, be coming quite yet. So we hope this first session will be really useful for those of you who are just starting to think about finding an internship and learning about what the J-1 visa is and, and all of those aspects of the, the international internship process. A bit of housekeeping before I turn it over to Fatima to begin the presentation. Everyone is muted, so if you do have any questions, please type them into the chat box and we'll read them off as they come in if they're pertaining to that, that portion of the presentation. But we do have a question and answer um, aspect afterwards. So if there's anything that doesn't necessarily fit, we can talk about those those questions later. Um, and if you did join us a little bit late or if you have to leave early, this session will be recorded and everyone who registered will get a recording of the session. So so no worries if there's there's anything that you, you have to step out and, and miss. Um, with that, Fatima, I will turn it over to you to, to get the presentation started. Thank you, Tamin, for that lovely introduction. <laughs> um, so now we're going to go over the overview, just a, a brief outline, just so you're aware of what we're going to cover during this um, presentation. We're going to start off by um, introducing InterExchange, who are we and what we can do for you, um, and you know, get a little bit more about our background. We're going to discuss what exactly the J-1 visa is, and also what is a visa sponsor. And then we're gonna talk about who exactly is eligible for the J-1 visa, how you could potentially find an internship in the US, and then once you secure that internship, how do you apply for the J-1 visa sponsorship? So who is InterExchange? InterExchange was founded uh, about over a little over 50 years ago, and we are a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to promote cross cultural awareness through a variety of different cultural exchange programs, whether it's interning, work, or volunteer. Um, as as we mentioned earlier, InterExchange is a J-1 visa sponsor that is designated by the U.S. Department of State, and we are located in New York City. So. We, we do a lot of, um, we actually, we work with a lot of students and young professionals and um, from more than 90 countries. Um, and those are, um, and excuse me, more than 90 countries that are represented in a worldwide partner network. And one thing I do want to highlight that I find really important is that we actually work directly with participants um, during the application process. So it means that you don't necessarily have to work with 
um, another organization in your home country or a lawyer and this really like helps the entire application process in terms of making it more streamlined making it more like financially feasible for you and you know if you have any questions or if your host employer has any questions you can come directly to us and we can assist you with that process so as you can see um, um, interexchange has um, has plenty of experience through a, a variety of different programs over the past 50 years and we just want um, and we just want you to, to um, know a little bit about us so that you can feel like you are in good, great hands and hopefully you do choose us as a sponsor if you do find an internship okay so before I do get started into discussing um, or talking a little bit more about how to find an internship and what a J-1 visa is, I wanted to um, focus on the Erasmus Plus Impact Study just to highlight um, the career advantages to international programs and how it can effectively help you with finding a job post-graduation. So again, so the Erasmus Impact Study is, um, they poll different like employers, students, and alumni about their Erasmus experiences and how beneficial that has been post-graduation and what employers are looking for and if that's a really important asset on a resume. So if you see here, there's 64% of employers consider an international experience to be import an important aspect for recruitment. So a lot of employers are actively looking for someone who has international experience um, or someone who has spent time overseas, whether that is to improve their skills, um, their skill sets, or learn a new language and have shown that they have thrived in that kind of environment. Additionally, 72% of students who were surveyed report that an international experience was beneficial for finding their first job, and 80% of alumni stated that their current job has international characteristics. And then of those alumni that were sur surveyed, um, they have found that they obtained their first job uh, quicker after graduation than those students who have not um, had an experience internationally. And also those alumni reported higher values of job security and future career prospects. So all those aspects that you learn during your internship in the US, you continue to, to develop that and have that international components um, in 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 those jobs that you've developed as a student so it's just really important like we just really wanted to show you the importance of an international experience and how that really could impact you in the future as you can see here there is a a, a number of employers and students and alumni who show that having international experience has really helped them to find to find a job and to make them um, more competitive when when finding when finding a job after college. So why should you intern abroad in the United States? And um, this is a question that we actually like to ask many students once they are going through the interview process with us, just so we can get a better understanding of why you like to come to the US. And you know, there's never really that real right answer. Or, I mean, there's never really a wrong answer to that because we all know that you have different goals and different um, reasons why you would like to come here. However, one of the number one reasons that a lot of students want to come to the US and intern abroad here is because they wanna really increase their knowledge of US culture and intercultural communication and skills and what we mean by this like a lot of a lot of students have an idea of what the US is going to be like whether they've seen it in movies like what interning in New York would be like or um, San Francisco um, in the Silicon Valley there's a lot of different notions of what what that would mean and then obviously comparing um, how how their 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 culture in their home country is different from that in the US and also learning that intercultural communication skills to, um, to be able to 
practice their English speaking skills and to also interact with different um, different people within the U.S. A lot of students say that, you know, like um, the U.S. is a melting pot and you do meet a lot of people from different countries and it really enhances your, your intercultural communica communication skills in that way. Another reason why um, students typically like want to come to US is because they want to learn flexibility and independence and have obtain more self-confidence. And these are a lot of soft skills that you can obtain if you do um, intern abroad here in the United States. And what we mean by this is that you gain a level of independence, you know, when you're when you're taking yourself and moving yourself to another country and finding housing or on your own or navigating through the city to find to get to your workplace or to um, find different cultural activities once you're outside of work. Um, and sometimes, you know, you're, you're coming here alone without, um, with, without any friends in a, in a new city. So it really, you know, empowers you to really fig, um, find out um, who you are and um, show that you can really thrive in, in a different city. In addition to that, um, the U.S. is, particularly known to have one of the best um, one one of the best um, economies and also have a lot of access to key businesses and a lot of headquarters are here in the United States. So the students want to have access to that global market and particular key organizations that they may not have the opportunity to intern with in their home country. So that's one of particularly why students want to come here because they want to have access to that and learn from different business professionals and and really um, be trained by them and to learn from them and have access also to those dynamic and innovative workplaces and exposure to new technology and methodologies. So, you know, sometimes in your home country, um, you may approach a problem or learn things differently than you would in the U.S., um, whether, again, you're learning something, new methodologies in social media marketing or trying to understand, um, or maybe there's different technologies or programs in here in the U.S., in, whether in engineering. So, again, there's a variety of reasons, different reasons why um, people want to intern in the U.S., and these are one of the most common reasons why. So now that we've talked a little bit about why, um, <laughs> we'll give you a little bit of background on inter-exchange, the, the importance of inter international experience, and potentially why you would come to the U.S., let's talk about what exactly the J-1 visa is and how that exactly fits in um, once you have found your internship. So the J-1 visa is a temporary non-immigrant visa for individuals participating in work in study-based exchange visitor programs. So the J-1 visa is different from an ESTA visa or any other um, waiver type visas because it does have additional benefits such as allowing for stipends, social security numbers. And with that, obviously there is additional scrutiny in terms of like, um, we have to, we, you know, there are certain um, guidelines that we have to follow to ensure that, you know, that you will receive the J-1 visa. Um, and the mission of the J-1 visa is um, to really increase mutual understanding between the people of the United States and the people of other countries by means of educational and cultural exchange. And it is required for any U.S. internship. So again, the J-1 visa is not um, is not for is not for excuse me, the J-1 visa is not a work visa for ordinary employment purposes, or nor is it a pathway to residency, citizenship, or other visas. Again, the purpose of the J-1 visa is for cultural exchange and to provide you with that, that bridge between, um, again, your home country and the uh, and um, and the United States. So once you're once you've completed your exchange program, you would have to return back to your home country and, and complete that exchange program. That's so my, what I is a J one visa spot? Sorry, I just want to oh, jump in with I'm a sorry. question that came in that I think is is um, pretty relevant to this slide. Um, you said that uh, J one visas are, are not work visas and, and they are for internships. Does that mean that paid internships are they possible? through the J-1 visa or do internships have to be unpaid? 
Oh yes, um, my apologies. I may not have um, clarified, um, been too clear on this. Um, so the J-1 visa, you are able to work in the United States and get paid. So that is one of the additional benefits for the J-1 visa. So while it isn't like, it's not a permanent work visa. So it's it's the kind of, it's a, um, it's a temporary visa where you're allowed to come here into the United States and you're able to train or intern in the US and because the J-1 visa, um, it is not a waiver visa, you're able to have that additional benefit such as receiving a stipend. And when we mean a stipend, it's um, a sort of, it's a compensation you can get paid. Um, but obviously the compensation would be dependent, you know, if, they're, if your host employer does decide to pay you. So yes, um, was I able to answer your question? Yep, I think that's that's perfect, thank you. All right, all right, thank you. Okay, so moving on to what is a J-1 visa sponsor? Um, so now that we define what a J-1 visa is, which is essentially, um, just briefly going to cover, the J-1 visa allows you to enter the United States. So that is the visa that you would obtain from you know, your, the US Embassy or the consulate. The J-1 visa sponsor, um, that is where we come in, inter-exchange. And a J-1 visa sponsor is an organization designated by the U.S. Department of State to verify eligibility and suitability for program participation. So the J-1 visa sponsors are independent from the U.S. government, and they act on their behalf to verify both participants and and that both participants and hosts meet US government regulations. So inter-exchange would issue you the required documentation, such as your DS-29 team form, which would essentially state that inter-exchange is your visa sponsor. And then the end, your DS-7002 form, which is your training plan, which is the training that would be provided by your host employer. And these are the required documentation that you would need to take with you in order to obtain your J-1 visa that we previously went over in the last slide. And inter-exchange, um, I do want to actually emphasize this, that inter-exchange um, determines the status of your visa because we are your visa sponsor, not your host employer. So for example, if your internship doesn't work out or you need to change your internship in any t and, or if there's any type of incongruence with your, with your host organiz organization, you don't have to return home immediately. So first you would contact inter-exchange and then we can discuss any other options, potentially you know, changing hosts or if there's other mechanisms to complete your internship in the United States. And with that, inter-exchange is also responsible for monitoring interns and, and employees throughout the program and what we mean by this is that we will reach out so aside from you know just reviewing your application providing the visa sponsor uh, sponsorship we will be um reaching out to you throughout your program to make sure that everything is okay so you know in in, in the case that if there is something that does if there is something that does go wrong um, during your internship you know, we would be able to assist you and we want you to make, um, want to feel comfortable to come to us and express any concerns that you may have that may have arise during your internship. Okay, so what are the goals of the J-1 intern program? So some of the goals might be different from other programs that briefly that we briefly saw in the first slide when we were talking about what inter-exchange is. So the goals of the J-1 intern program, uh, particularly for participants, is to gain practical skills and expertise in their academic field of study. So again, the purpose of the program um, and for you is so that you can really um, apply what you have learned um, in in your home country at your university to training in the United States so that you're really building off of your skill sets and that you're that you're learning something you know that you wouldn't have learned in, in your home country and you're applying what you've know what you've learned in 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 the classroom to 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 the <laughs> excuse me to to your internship. 
Additionally, per, um, another goal is to learn U.S. businesses practices and techniques, understand U.S. culture and society. So, you know, as as much as you're learning something inside of the in the workplace, you know, after hours, whether you're in office or, you know, like once is out of work hours, you're also learning about U.S. culture um, and understanding, you know, what U.S. is about. And then also obviously returning home and sharing what you've learned with with your peers and also, you know, applying the knowledge and skill sets that you have learned from from your supervisors or from your colleagues to um, your future career. And that's something that we've talked about earlier in regards to the importance of an international program and like how you can take what you've learned in the U.S. and really apply it once in post-graduation. And again, whether you've learned new tech, uh, methodologies or new technologies and really have increased your skill sets, whether it's your, your soft skills and you gain more confidence or your hard skills and you're learning different kinds of programming or different techniques that you may have not learned in your home country. <laughs> And similarly, similarly, uh, our host employers, um, the goals for host employers to allow U.S. employees to learn about other cultures and skills, and you know, also to have that same ability to interact and understand foreign cultures, and ass also assist in providing culturally rich experiences for their participants, and to ensure that that kind of exchange takes place. So you know, within your, within the workplace, um, your, your host employer can provide, you know, company outings, whether, or like company holiday parties, um, you know, potluck during Thanksgiving and really get to know, um, different U.S. Um, holidays or get to know, uh, your other, your other colleagues and what they have to, what, um, learn about their background because again the U.S. is a melting pot so it's is going to be you know an exchange of many different cultures and getting to know them. Also in addition to this um, aside from you know just the cultural aspect um, the goal of the for host employers is that you know they provide you with um, the proper training so that again you can grow professionally and a way that inter-exchange kind of um, in sh or the way that interchange does ensure this is that we are responsible for reviewing all aspects of your training plan to make sure that your internship meets these goals that we have listed here for you and for the host employer and that you are learning different business practices and that you are going to engage with local culture so we're going we will work with your host employer you know to make sure that what you are learning um, um, in your internship is not going to be cler clerical work or unskilled labor. Again, your your internship and your experience in the United States is meant for that professional development and also to learn more and, and for that cultural exchange. So we, we, we do our best during that application review to ensure that you will receive this um, during your program. So another poll that I wanted to highlight here for you all is um, we have, you know, asked our participants, um, our 2019 career um, USA participants, um, and how exactly that program has assisted them um, once they have completed their program. And about 96.5% said that they learned new skills that will benefit their career careers, while 93.8 said that they were able to ch achieve their learning objectives. Um, the third point here is something that um, InterExchange and our career training team is really proud of is that about you know almost 94% have of their participants said that their employers closely follow the training plan. And while you know we all want to see these numbers like 100%, um, we do take a lot of a pride in seeing these numbers because we do know that this is higher than the mean and then the mean and most than other sponsors and the reason why our numbers are so high in this regard is because like again we do we do work with you and we do work with the host employers to ensure that you are receiving that training that you came here for the came to the u.s for so 
we want to ensure that when you come here that you are that you are going to build your skill sets so that when you come to come back to your home country you you'll feel confident in knowing that your time that you've invested your time in the US and it's you know it's it's um it'll it'll benefit you in your future and then about 92 93 percent said that their skills and capabilities increase okay so um i would like to stop here for a, a moment to talk and see if anyone has any questions before i talk about who um, is eligible to intern in the united states does anyone have any questions about the j1 visa or j1 visa sponsorship i know that those two can be like slightly confusing for most people. Sure, so we have a couple questions that have come in um, so far uh, regarding the visas. And the first is, um, are you able to have an internship and then also have a part-time job on the side under the J-1 intern visa? So no, so the J-1 visa is meant to, if you're if applying for the J-1 inter visa program, you can only work with your, with your host company that we have sponsored you with. Um, you're not, you're not allowed to have a second job. Again, the J-1 intern visa is not meant for ordinary work purposes. It's meant for training and it has to be related to your academic field of study. Excellent, thank you. Um, and the second question, um, I'm gonna take this one unless you wanna jump in, Fatima, but um, there's a question about the current situation of J-1 visas given the presidential proclamations and some travel restrictions. Um, so I, I don't wanna get too in depth because this is a, a complicated um, subject, but the short answer is that J-1 visas can be issued if the host organization is part of the US Chamber of Commerce or if the sponsoring organization is part of the US Chamber of Commerce. And InterExchange is a member of the US Chamber of Commerce, so we are not um, subject to Presidential Proclamation 10052. Um, however, there are still travel restrictions from certain parts of the world um, for those who are coming to the United States. So if you live in the Schengen region or Ireland, the United Kingdom, China, Iran, or Brazil, there are um, individual geographical travel restrictions in, in getting a J-1 visa at the moment. Um, we have a new administration um, that's going to be sworn in tomorrow, and, and we understand that a lot of these, these rules will be altered um, under the new administration. So I would say stay tuned. But the short answer is right now we are issuing J-1 visas because we can and you can receive a visa depending on your home country. So if you have an internship at the moment and you, you think that you are eligible to get a J-1 visa at the moment, certainly contact us and, and we'll, we'll vet your program um, and, and give you a little bit more specific guidance. But I did want to address that and that's a, that's a good question that we probably should, we should talk about because I'm sure that's in, in many people's minds right now. Awesome, great. Thank you. And is there any other questions um, before I proceed? Um, there's some eligibility, but I think we're going to cover some of those things as you go through. So feel free okay. to, to talk about eligibility. Awesome. So hopefully we'll answer some questions as we go through these the next few slides regarding um, who is eligible to enter in, in the United States. And obviously, if you're on this call, we're going to hope that you are also eligible to intern in the U.S. Okay, so the J-1 intern um, program is open to current students or recent graduates from outside of the United States. And you do need to be outside of the US, of the US at the time of your application. And if you are a recent graduate, you must begin the internship within 12 months of your graduation date. So what we recommend uh, if, you, if you are a recent graduate is to submit your application within 10 months of graduation, just so that your eligibility doesn't expire and that you have enough time to apply and to obtain your, your J-1 visa sponsorship and your J-1 visa. In addition to this, your internships must be directly related to your field of study. And even so, even if you if you have professional background, 
um, in a particular field, you need to, you, um, it, excuse me, your internship must directly relate to your coursework course cur <laughs> coursework and, and this is because the internship program is meant to bridge academic theory and practical knowledge and we want to ensure again that you know it, it all goes back to the fact that it's meant to build off what you already know and what you've already learned in your in the classroom setting so the internships also may last up to 12 months so um that is the maximum number of months that you can intern in the United States or um, for anywhere from like one month to 12 months. So if you decide to, you know, do a two month internship or three month internship, you can still extend your program um, to 12 months or to um, additional month or, um, but you would have to apply for that extension application. But again, your internship may last up to 12 months. I do want to note though, like um, we briefly mentioned that if you have professional background, so um, and you want to intern in a different kind of field of study. If you are a recent graduate and you have at least one year full-time experience, the trainee program may be better fit uh, for you. However, you would already have to have graduated and have that one year full-time experience. So if you want to ask a little bit more questions about this, we can um, send you additional information regarding the trainee program. However, um, Assuming you're a university students, we're just going to cover um, cover the um, moving forward the internship requirements. Okay, so what type of internship can you do? So these are the six main categories that inter exchange sponsors for um, the J one visa the J one intern program. There are other categories exist, but again, these are the six main programs. So there are arts and culture information, media, and communications, public administration, law, hospitality and tourism, management, business, commerce, and finance, and then sciences, engineering, architecture, mathematics, and industrial occupations. Um, I don't want you to fret if um, you may not exactly see your um, what you're currently studying right now. These are just the six major um, categories, the, the six or like six umbrellas. There are other subcategories, that will follow up with you again, you know, just in case you don't see it right away. I don't want you to freak out. But again, this is the six main uh, categories that we do sponsor um, internships for. So what internships can't you do? So um, again, as we I mentioned a few times, we InterExchange does not um, sponsor any unskilled or casual labor positions. We also do not sponsor any child care or elder care where you would work um, um, with any children or elderly. So no clinical work, social work, anything in medicine or any anything with patient or animal care or contact. And essentially, you know, this is um, pretty broad, but anything prohibited by the visa sponsor. So um, I just want to stress that the internship program is meant for cultural exchange and professional development. It's not meant for ordinary work purposes again. Um, so if it may if it may fall under if your internship may fall under what you know clinical work or social work, they may be other visa um, other visa categories that may work better for use. but hopefully you know um, what you're currently studying we do we do sponsor. Okay, so what type of company can host me, host you? Essentially, you know, the host company also needs to meet certain requirements. And one of those requirements being that your host company must have a professional space to um, host you. Um, I know given the current climate with COVID, this might be slightly different in terms of remote work, but essentially your host employer would need to provide, you know, whether it's a laptop or, um, uh, a space where our computer, whatever it may be, to have that kind of professional experience, that professional, you know, um, that office space for you. Um, it can't be in any residential setting. So what we mean by this is different from remote work. Your host company cannot be based in a residential setting. So, you know, if you were to go into office, you shouldn't be going into someone else's home. It should be in a professional space, you know, with desk, <laughs> an actual uh, an office space where 
where you can work um, with your peers. In addition to this, um, there must be experienced staff to assist you in achieving your objectives. And one way that we ensure that you do receive um, continuous on-site supervision and mentoring is that inter-exchange requires that there is five full-time employees per J1 intern. So for example, if your, if your host company has 10 full-time employees, or um, if, yeah, if you're, excuse me, if there are two J1 interns, then there needs to be at least 10 full-time employees, so that five to one ratio. In addition to this, um, your host company cannot displace any U.S. workers or fill any la labor need or use the program for any ordinary work purposes, and they also must abide by all occupational health and safety laws. And what um, and another way that inter-exchange ensure, ensures this is that we ask that your host employer provide a workers' compensation certificate to ensure that you know that if there's anything were to occur during your program that you are covered and that everything um, that you are safe on on site. So, what should your internship include? Your internship should include a structured and guided work-based learning in your academic field of study, and it needs to be tailored to your inter um, to your skills and your experience. Again, um, as I mentioned earlier in regards to the training plan, we InterExchange cannot write your training plan. Your host employers might write must write it for for you because we won't be providing the training, but we do ensure once we're reviewing your application, once we're reviewing your training plan, that there is that balance between your learning opportunities and your host employers uh, and your contributions to the organization. Your internship also must be full-time with a maximum of 45 hours a week and a minimum of 32 hours a week. And your internship also must um, include exposure to U.S. culture in and outside of the workplace, which again we would be, um, which would be highlighted in your training plan that your um, host company would pr um, prepare for you. So the number one question we typically get asked is if your internship is paid. So essentially, the short answer to this question is that it depends. It depends on your host employer, um, if your host employer is going to give you a compensation or um, so if you were to start looking for internships and you really would like a paid internship, I would try to look for paid internships exclusively um, unless you particularly really like a host employer and maybe you can work out something with the host employer if they were to provide any sort of compensation. However, um, if your host employer is going to be unpaid, um, your host employer must follow the U.S. Department of Labor criteria for any unpaid internships. And any programs exceeding six months must always be paid at least the minimum wage. So if your program is from um, one month to six or like under six months, then your host employer is not obligated to pay you. However, inter-exchange does require that if your program is over six months that you are paid this, um, the state minimum wage. Additionally, to any compensation packages that you might um, receive from your host employer is the, some non-monetary compensation options. Some host employers include you know, housing as, as um, part of your compensation package or even some meals or you know, also um, transportation sometimes your host employers would pay pay that as well so something to really discuss with your host employer if you do get um, if you are extended a an internship offer and again I wanted I, <laughs> for those of you that are concerned about not receiving compensation or if you think that it's not out there it is out there there's about you know 77 0.4% of our participants did receive financial compensation with an average stipend of at least um, $2,250 a month. So there are paid internships out there. Um, it, there's, um, it, it just does require to take a little bit more time to search for those internships, but yes, your internships can be paid. So what should you consider when looking for an internship? Um, one of the main 
one of the main things that most people look for when they're considering an internship is location. So think about where you would like to intern, whether it's a city or whether it's a more rural area. Um, cities do have more opportunities in terms of internship, but uh, something to consider is the cost of living might be higher and also transportation considerations it might be easier to um, move around in the city with the public transportation option options while other rural areas might require you to um, have a car or um, to get around around the, around the area Additionally, think about the program, your program season and your program length. Um, there are many opportunities, internship opportunities during the summer months, but competition is a lot higher because you know a lot of more there are a lot more people in summer break who are looking for um, summer internships, while maybe those who are looking for a fall internship or spring internship, there might be less competition, but there also might be also like less opportunities during that time of year. Another thing to consider is um, placement services versus self-place. Um, so, you know, a lot of people um, get a little bit overwhelmed with the internship ser search and find it might be easier to work with a placement company. Um, this is a great way, you know, to find an internship if you feel that you are really struggling to find one or you feel like you don't have much of a, a network to work with. Um, placement services um, really would assist you with finding that internship. Um, it's really, it's a better fit for those people, for those students who have less specific requirements in regards to what they um, would like to get out of an internship. However, you know, there are higher costs to um, to working with placement com um, companies and it might not be necessarily really tailored to your individual interests. Um, whereas, you know, if you were to find an internship on your own, um, you know, you've done the work to really like get to know a company and do done the research and it might be a little bit um, more tailored to your interests and potentially any requirements that your university might um, have of you in, in in, in regards to completing an internship abroad or for you know for your um, your for your academic program so you know that's another thing to consider you know is this internship is a right fit for me you know you really want to find an internship that relates to your academic field of study so that um, so that you um, so that you um, are really um, building off what you already know and that you can continue, um, you know, seeking that professional development and applying it once you graduated. And also another thing to consider is eligibility requirements for your intern visa, um, the host employer requirements, and your proposed training program. Really research the company, you know, look into Glassdoor and LinkedIn and um, find out if that host employer is eligible. Not all host employers might be eligible, but I do want to say that it doesn't necessarily mean it's a reflection on the host organization or the participant. There are just some regulations that, you know, as a visa sponsor um, or um, that we have to abide by and also that, you know, the host employers must meet in order to be um, partake in the J-1 intern visa process. Okay, so um, I just would do want to pause here really quickly to cover any eligibility questions that you may have um, before I continue into how to find an internship. Um, I think the only eligibility question that we didn't get a chance to cover, and I'll, I'll answer it um, to, to give you some time to, to breathe, Fatima. Um, are you eligible to apply as both an undergraduate student and a master's student? Uh, and the answer is is yes, as long as you have academic coursework that relates regardless of the, your degree level, undergraduate, graduate, even PhD, um, you can uh, you can apply to the internship program um, as long as you have that that verifiable coursework. But with that, Fatima, I will turn it back over to you. Awesome. So a number one question, one of the other top questions that we typically get is how do how do participants find their internship? So I know the internship search could potentially, you know, be really overwhelming, you know, just in your home country. So how do you find an internship in the U.S.? And hopefully we'll cover some few ways that people or um, previous interns have found their internships. So one of the top ways that students have found their internships is really through networking and referrals. Um, you know, 
I would suggest starting with your um, start with your career career center in your university. Maybe um, network with some alumni who have gone to your school, or network with your professors, or even your peers, or other students who have interned at at a certain company that or a certain field that you're really interested in. It's a great way to start. It's a great way to start looking for um, that that kind of network to really give you that step that next step to finding an internship. Um, so, you know, if you don't really feel like you have a great network, you know, you can also start networking online on, on LinkedIn. It's another, you know, we are going to have a, a webinar presentation next month in February, which we'll share with you um, later once we um, finish <laughs> this webinar, but we're going to show you how to really build your online presence and then like leverage your network. So to, just to have a better understanding of how to use your network and how to showcase yourself to um, employers online so that you can potentially land an internship in this way. Um, another way a lot of um, interns have found their internships is through search engines and internship listings. It's um, probably the most straightforward way that a lot of um, um, students have found their internships, but it, you know, it's really going to places like LinkedIn or places like Indeed.com or other industry-specific websites that post um, internships in your related field of studies. Um, it's obviously a great way um, to, uh, to really start your search and really to get a better understanding of different companies that are out there looking for interns. Also, another way is cold calling and cold emailing. It's pretty much how it sounds like you're really going to just be sending um, emails to host employers or calling them to of, of your interests. I, I know there's one intern who I interviewed and he said that he followed their um, this particular company on on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Instagram, and he really made himself known to that host company by that by the time he's done the interview, like the final interview round um, with that host company, he um they know they knew him so well they're like all right well you know <laughs> at this point we have to we have to hire you because you know you've done so much work into getting to know us and obviously i'm sure he with he he was a great candidate um, himself so that's just another way to really put yourself out there and even if you don't have a network to you know to email those um to email those um, uh, host employers also, um, if you have a host employer in mind that you really would like to learn from, to really train with, but they're not, they don't have any open positions, one way to go about this is to create and pitch your own internship. So there are plenty of students who have created their own projects where they, you know, presented this in a cover letter to their host employer and let them know, like, what kind of skill sets or what could they provide to the host employer once they um, arrive in the United States? And it's just a great way to, you know, pitch your, um, to pitch your, pitch, pitch, pitch an internship, and to not be really afraid to go about it that way because there are so many, um, you know, it really just shows that you uh, have a lot of initiative and a lot of drive that you're willing to um, just go for it in that sense. And also, I briefly mentioned that you can also find internships through a placement company. And then also, we have our employer interchange employer database that we'll share with you once um, um, after the webinar. This database just really covers um, employers who have already been vetted and who have, we have already worked with um, through interchange. So that you know, um, it's it's another just great way to start to see like which companies. Um, we've worked with and which companies you know that you may not have known of that are, is in your field of study. So how have InterExchange found an internship? So these are just like some common ways that we just like to highlight that participants have found their internship. Um, so one you know one person you know f saw um, saw her supervisor at a comedy festival 
um, and kind of, you know, networked her in that way. So like, don't be afraid to like, kind of like talk to someone and like really express your interest because you never know who you might be talking to. Um, another person searched for their university's alumni in her field of study and who has worked in the US on LinkedIn. Um, another told his father's friend that he wanted to what he wanted to do and was introduced to a colleague. So that's just another way to, you know, of networking. Um, one other student interviewed their CEO um, for a school project or a thesis. So you never know also what your what your what your project might lead you to as well. So there are so many different ways to kind of go about finding an internship. Again, reaching out to your professors for suggestions. Um, um, so I don't want you to be discouraged or even overwhelmed. Just don't be afraid to kind of like put yourself out there a little bit more. So how have, again, so this is just kind of like a brief, you know, overview of how inter-exchange participants have found their internships. You know, again, as we went over earlier, the most common way is, you know, through a referral. Um, a family from family member or past colleague, you know, but about like 43%, almost 43% of our participants have found it that way, or about, you know, 20, 21.5% have found it through university and then cold calling a host as well. So again, there's so many different ways. I uh, just don't be discouraged and don't give up. <laughs> you will find an internship of your dreams, promise you. <laughs> so, we also collected a few tips from different um, from interchange interns about you know how to find um, an internship, and I want to point out you know the last the the last point, um, but specifically because understanding the J one rules is really important and probably the best best way to start your internship search and prepare for your internship search because. Um, many host employers don't know the J-1 visa rules and they might be um, they might be a little bit, you know, discouraged or shy um, with hiring an international student. So if you come prepared and giving them, you know, the facts, we can also provide you with a letter of support introducing inter-exchange as, as a J-1 visa sponsor that, you know, would assist you in the process of um, the application process and that we'd work with them directly as well. And it just really shows them initiative and shows shows them that, you know, they, they don't have anything to worry about when, when hiring an international intern and kind of shows, you know, the benefits also of hiring an international intern. Um, so that's something I definitely want to stress and um, when you prepare for finding that internship of your dreams. And then also, you know, again, I probably briefly mentioned this, but review industry specific websites and student or professional associations, you know, go on, go on specific websites that are related to your field. Um, um, read what articles are being put out there. Maybe you found like a project or that you're interested in and you could reach out to that professor or that, that contact person, do a little bit more digging. Um, stay knowledgeable about industry specific topics in, in that sense. and maybe even pursue information, informational interviews. This is something you can definitely do on LinkedIn. Um, if you connect with someone on LinkedIn, maybe that person can point out who to get in touch with and um, maybe even request an, that, an interview with them so that you can learn more about what they do, what the company does. Definitely go in there prepared um, and ask like questions that are relevant to their projects or to you and like and your interests. And again, ask your professors. This is like definitely number one tip, as you can see, is one of probably one of the top ways that people have found their internships to really ask your professors because your professors have been in in a specific industry for some time. So they definitely have the kind the the right contacts to really set you in the right direction. And again, you know, read company blogs to find out what they're working for. Maybe even target smaller firms because um since it might be a more like they're they're starting out you you probably will even learn a little bit more from them you know um to really work in like a startup culture and in a smaller firm where you might have a more intimate setting in terms of learning from your supervisors one-on-one -on -one 
And then also keep your social media professional. Um, again, this is something that w we can even speak about further in our leveraging um, your or building your online presence and leveraging your um, online um, online network um, webinar. But you definitely want to keep your social media professional, and so that when um, employers are visiting your profile, they 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 like what they see and they have a good sense of who you are professionally and what you have to offer. Um, so again, as I mentioned to you, be prepared, research your, the company you're working for in depth and know what you're applying for. You want to know what you're applying for and which company you're applying with because um, it really says a lot once you're applying with that host employer and you're having that interview with them. They want to know that the person that they're hiring is also just as passionate for their company and the kinds of projects that they're working on. Um, and also update your resumes and cover letters. We also have a webinar on this um, that we're going to be presenting um, next month. So we can help you, you know, really update your cover, cover letter in a US style, and, like talk about a little bit more what US co host companies are looking for, but this is something you definitely wanna do before you start applying. And then set up a document or spreadsheet to save potential host details. Um, this will help you when you're applying to multiple um, different host employers and that way you can keep track of you know exactly the compensation the location the position it'll just help you stay more organized and um, really just show that you're motivated and passionate for the internship position when you're applying when you're writing these cover later cover letters and don't be afraid to follow up on your um, app, application and then um, just you know to make sure that they received it and it also shows that you're you are interested in the position and if always always follow up with a personalized thank you note um, or thank you email if you do receive an inter an interview with your host employer. Um, and these are a brief, some brief host, uh, <laughs> excuse me, this is a slide um, that covers some of the host employers that we have worked with in the past. As you can see, it ranges from really well-known, big, bigger companies to smaller companies such as, you know, um, Humans right, Human Rights Watch um, or other nonprofits, you know, Lawyers Without Borders, Max Mara, in a variety of different fields, you know, um, whether it's media, whether it's fashion, um, you know, we have sponsored a, a wide variety of different um, a different companies and internship fields. So I think um, that's my, we are low on time. So I, I want to make sure we get to some of the questions before we, we jump into the, the, okay. the application process. And then we can probably speed through that um, at the end. Um, but one question that, that has come up in a variety of different ways um, what's the best time to start searching for an internship? What, I mean, I guess we'll, we'll talk about the, the application process, but what's what's a good timeline for beginning your application search to when um, when you want to be in the United States? I honestly would probably start your, app, um, your internship search at least six months before your internship. This will just give you enough time to really do the research into a company to start applying to find like the interview process and also doing the research into how to like obtain that j1 visa and then start your application um with your with interexchange and then also um receive your documents and your go in for your interview for the j1 visa this will just give you enough cushion and enough time so that you're not rushing and that you are going to make it for your internship start date Excellent. Um, another question going back to eligibility. If someone has both a master's degree and one year of total work experience, um, should they consider the intern program or the trainee program? So if this would really depend on the, in, the kind of field that you would like to part, um, train in. So if, you, if your master's degree is related more so to your um, to your to your training um, to your internship field, then maybe the, the intern program would be better suited for you. But you do have to keep in mind that you would have to have graduated within one year. Um, so if you have that master's degree and you graduated within and your internship start date 
is within that one year of your graduation, then the internship program would be better suited for you. However, if you've already graduated and it's been past a year since you graduate your master's degree and your, your one year of full-time experience relates better to your, what you want to train in, then the training program would be, would be better suited for you. Does that make sense? That, that makes sense to me. Um, please let please chat us if it doesn't. Um, but I think a follow up kind of to what you were saying. Does the one year of experience, and I know this is for the trainee program, but does the one year of experience need to be um, conti uh, contiguous? Can it be across multiple um, host organizations, or or does it have to be one year at, at one organization in the past? It has to be one year of cumulative um, full time experience. But the experience that um, that one, it would have to be related to your training field of study. So it can't be across different fields. We, you would have to show that you have enough experience over at least one year full time professional experience that you have learned and that when you're once you do get to the US that you have some sort of foundation for that particular training field um, that you would like to train in. And that's essentially the reason why it can't be across a different number of different um, fields um, per se. Does that make sense? Excellent. Yep, that, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I think those are all the questions I wanted to touch on now. We can um, jump back into the, the presentation. Um, for everyone in the audience, we are coming towards the end. So if you do have any miscellaneous questions that we haven't touched upon, um, now is the time to, to ask away and, and we'll answer those during the, the question and answer period. Fatima, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So um, we're just going to briefly go over the J-1 visa application process. So we went over the first, it's to find an internship and determine your eligibility. Then you start, once you've found your internship and you have, you are eligible to apply, you can start your application for the J-1 visa sponsorship. And then once you submit your application, InterExchange will review your application, will conduct an interview with you, and then perform any site visits with your host employer if they need it. And if everything looks great on your application and um, you're, you're eligible and your host employer is eligible and they provide you with a great, uh, great training plan, then we can approve your application and that's when we'll send you your documents and you'll attend your um, embassy or consulate interview for the J-1 visa. And if that goes well, then they will approve you for the J-1 visa. You'll get that in the mail with probably within a week, and then you can start your travel in the United States. So how long would the, the visa process take? This is probably a really important slide and probably will answer a lot of your questions. So InterExchange has one of the fastest review times of any J-1 visa sponsor. And we take one day to do initial review of your application to ensure that everything's complete, you've submitted all your documents. And then once that's complete, we'll give you an answer and perform any of the steps that I mentioned earlier. Um, within 10 days um, that your application is marked as complete. So the entire process from filling out your application to going for your embassy interview and then receiving your visa takes about six to eight weeks. Um, so again, that's the reason kind of why we recommend a maybe like a three to uh, at least like a six month timeline from finding your internship and doing that search to all the way to like um, getting your J-1 visa and getting set to go to the US. So what is included in your inter-exchange program? So inter-exchange, we do offer more support than just an application review. Your inter-exchange, um, the program fees does include your accident and sickness insurance. The sickness insurance includes um, any accidents or if you were to get sick while you're on the program. And then it also includes the SEVIS fee, which is a fee that is paid to the Department of Homeland Security. Um, it just maintains and uh, all the records of exchange um, students and professionals that come in and out of the United States. You'll also have access to our career training participant list. So any other career training participant on the program who decides to partake in this program, you'll have you'll be able to reach out to, maybe they're in your area and get to know them. Um, that's something you'll be able to get access to. And then we also provide 24 hour emergency support. So if anything happens on your program at any time, you can always call InterExchange and we'll be happy to help you um, with whatever problem that you may have. 
And also we provide our language partner program where we partner you up with a part, um, participant or with someone with our working abroad program, someone who wants to practice their English um, and maybe you want, or, or excuse me, not their English, they want to practice their, um, maybe your mother tongue and then that you want to practice their english that's something that we can partner you up with if you know they're available and then we also provide a lot of resources for events um housing and cultural adjustment should you need it um we'd be there to help you to and provide you those resources um so that is all i have for you today um does anybody have any questions for me in regards to um the application process or any other eligibility questions or that you may have there are a couple of miscellaneous questions that have come in that I've been saving. Um, so uh, someone asked if they were interested in applying for an F student visa later on. Do they need to go home to their home country to reapply or can they switch from a cultural exchange visa to an, a student visa in the United States? Um. I'm I'm not quite to be honest I'm not quite sure I could get back with you in this I'm not too sure um, about the requirements for F1 visa from a J1 visa I do know that F1 visa students they must return to their home country to apply for the J1 visa um correct me if I'm wrong Tamman I'm nope I think you're you're spot on I think compliance is probably a little bit more of my wheelhouse but um because the J-1 visas are cultural exchange, the intent is that you will return to your home country at the end of your internship. So um, you shouldn't be coming with the intent to switch to a student visa, to switch to a work visa, to switch to any other type of visa. Um, if that's the case and you are thinking about switching to a student visa, it probably makes more sense just to apply for a student visa because a lot of student visas have opportunities for you to, to also do an internship. So um, with all of these these programs, um, there, there might be the mechanism for you to change visas, but it's, um, it's not the intent or the goal of this program. Um, another question is about contact info. Um, so this is my contact information on the screen, but yes, if you have any follow-up questions, please reach out to um, the inter-exchange email or any of our social media handles. Um, we're, we're a pretty small team, so both Fatima and I, those are our photos and the rest of our team um, right on this page. Um, so Fatima, if someone ha already found their internship, how and when can they begin their application for the J-1 visa? So if you already have your internship offered, you can actually start your application process now, <laughs> um, you would, we can, um, in the follow-up email, I'll share with you the resources, or if you would like to go to our website right now at interexchange.org, you can find career training, and then you can hit on um, participants, and then apply now, and then it'll, it'll lead you to our eligibility quiz, where you'll have to just briefly, you know, state, you know, that you're a student, if you're a student, and then that if you're offered an internship, name your host employer, and then from there you can start your intern, um, your inter-exchange application for the J-1 visa um, sponsorship. And if and you have any questions, oh sorry, <laughs> um, if you have any questions about the application process, um, you can definitely um, either chat us um, um, on the website or even email us, we'll really work with you with um, through the application process if you do have any questions. And should someone apply for sponsorship uh, before or after the interview with their internship organization? Um, it would be best to apply after your interview and that you know that you've already have secured an internship because the you know the purpose of starting your visa sponsor application is that you already have secured an internship, which is the first step to um, application for applying. Um, so we do. I do recommend that you start your application once you have um, secured that internship. Excellent. And what are the fees associated with participating in uh, sponsorship by InterExchange for the J1 program? So the fees are dependent on the number. Um, the, 
the number of months that you choose to partake in the um, in your program in the US we do have our costs and fees page which will um, which again we'll share with you after after this webinar but it'll give you a breakdown exactly um, you know depending on um, what country you're from and also you know how long how long that internship is excellent um, and there are a few questions um, just touching on follow-up there are a few specific situational questions in here about whether people should apply for the intern or trainee visa. We're not ignoring those questions, but we're just gonna follow up individually um, with, with each of you regarding your situation. It looks like the last question in here, um, worth touching upon again, um, what is the situation about traveling to the US right now due to COVID? Um, so just, just a reminder, if you are from a country, if you're living in a country that is not covered by one of the geographical um, travel restrictions, you are able to travel to the U.S. as of today. Um, there might be changes with a new administration, um, but right now we are processing visa sponsorship for people in countries where they are able to travel, um, but we're looking closely at these host organizations to make sure that it's safe and, and they're taking necessary precautions and that you're not um, coming into an environment that, that could put you at risk. So um, where it's possible, um, and it's country dependent, you are able to travel and, and start your program and, and get visas from, from the embassy, but it does vary greatly country to country. Um, with that, I think we're a little over time, so I'm going to wrap up. Fatima, thank you for a great presentation and, and for uh, a ton of information. I, I know everyone's muted, so I will, I will thank you on their behalf. Um, and just a reminder, this is our first session. Um, we have uh, nine more coming up every Tuesday at the same time. Next week, Fatima and I will switch roles, and I'm going to talk about developing in-demand skills that a host organization might want to see on your resume. Uh, and later on in the, the spring, we'll talk about searching for internships in the United States and some specific tips. We'll talk about developing your resume, developing your cover letter, practicing for interviews, so a lot of great stuff. Um, over the next couple months, but but thank you all for helping us kick off our webinar series today. Thank you so much. Hope you have a great night or day wherever you are. <laughs>